Hello, I'm Sapster, and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Well, it's a month in NHL 24, and you're having trouble scoring goals. Well, that's alright, and look no further, because in this video, I'm going to explain some of the plays, the philosophies, and the maneuvers that I use to score in NHL 24. We have rush plays, rebounds, deflections, cycle plays, and a little tidbit at the end where I explain why I think my offense is so effective in NHL 24, and how you can utilize some of my philosophies into helping build your offensive repertoire. So first, let's get into rush offense, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. First, let's start with some rush offense plays. On this play, I win the faceoff back with Nico Heischer, and I hit a one-touch pass to Heischer from the wing. I send it across, and I get a quick cut goal. Now, this play can offer a lot of lessons to those both on offense and on defense. When playing off the rush, you want to play with as much speed as possible to give you the defense as little time to react. And also on defense, you want to defend between the dots. Now, when I get this pass, I immediately one touch it over the Heischer. And the reason is, is because I can read that his defenseman is already coming too close to the boards and I have too much time to one touch that pass over. Now, as a defenseman off the rush, you should be playing between the dots. You should be in the middle of the circle and you should be in this area. He's already cheating out past that area which gives me a good inclination that he's trying to cut me off the board. So I'm going to one-touch it to Heischer. I one-touch the Heischer, and I realize I could give this to Hughes, but a better play would be to delay a little bit to allow Giroux space to go up and allow Hughes space to go up. Try and get behind the defenseman, because if I show this move too early, he will be able to cut me off here, and there's no guarantees that Giroux is going to be able to blow by the check in time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delay enough so that my players can go up the ice and I can hit maybe a two-way passing play. It works. Giroux blows by and so does Hughes. Now, I could have passed to Giroux here, but McAvoy is clearly fixated on Giroux. I mean, his body's turned, so it just a safer play for me to go to Hughes. Yes, there is Matthews there, but in my head, it's safer to just go to Jack Hughes. Send the pass over. He tried to step up on Giroux, and it's another pass over. It's in the back of the net. So again, let's count the mistakes that uh, my opponent made on this play. One, he went too far out. Two, he attacked the wrong guy, let two guys get behind him, and it's in the back of the net. That's how you turn a quick face off from the neutral zone into rush offense. Now, let's look at turning a, a neutral zone turnover into some rush offense. So my opponent gets blown up at the blue line, and I hit a cut play, another two cuts to Ronick, and it's a backhand goal. Now, this play is very fast, and it's... How f it shows how quickly a turnover can end up in the back of your net. So when I hit him, I decide I'm going to wait for Mario to cut. Now, the reason why I'm going to wait for Mario to cut, he's going to cut around here diagonally because of strong side slant. So what's going to happen is that when he cuts across, his skates are going to prohibit the stick of the defender. The defender cannot reach through you to intercept the puck. So I know that as long as I lead it to his forehand side, because he's left-handed, he's not going to be able to bring his stick over to his forehand side to intercept the puck. So Mario is impeding his stick with his skates, allows the pass to get through. I do another delay vertical or horizontally to allow Ronick a little bit more space up the ice. And it's a forehand backhand. So again, take away the space with the with the check. Send two passes up, a little bit of vertical or horizontal delay to allow your player to go up the ice. Forehand backhand in the back of the net. This rush chance features a breakout, a break in, and an example of why full attack is such an effective offensive pressure. So I take the puck with my green. It's a saucer pass up to New and Dyke. I decide I'm going to saucer to the middle, delay horizontally and give my defenseman a chance to come up and score a goal. Now, if you remember, the person who made the original interception was my defenseman, was Adam Foote. He makes the pass out, and I immediately recognize, well, it's a two-on-two -two situation, but I have to move because there's back-checking pressure coming up the other, other way. So I'm going to get angled off at the boards here if I keep going, and cutting in is too hard because the stick's already in a position to poke the puck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to feather a sauce in the empty space and let Garen come onto it. Now, when this happens, I immediately recognize he's going to switch to this defenseman because it's closer to the puck. This AI is going to come to him. 
he's going to follow to Garen because Garen is going to come over here. So they're going to try and remain uh, parallel to the attacking forwards and try and keep that gap. I decide that I'm going to delay. Originally, I'm looking for new Dyke to cut, but once that doesn't open up, I realize that I need to delay to allow my players to enter the zone. On full attack, Adam Foote is going to blow by his defender because he's thinking offense immediately. And because of this, this whole lane is now open because I've delayed and backed up his defenseman. I'm going to hit Adam Foote on the cut and I'm going to go backhand, forehand in the back of the net. So once again, like you want to play the speed off the rush, but at the same time, changing your speeds opens up more lanes because if, you know, if you're going super fast up, the defense has to keep that pace with you on a gap, right? But if you slam on the brakes, if the defense doesn't slam on the brakes immediately, then all of a sudden you've opened up an extra foot or two of space. And on this play, the moment I slammed on the brakes or wasn't going north the whole time I decided to go east, the defenseman backed up too much, opened up a lot of space, and I go backhand forehand in the back of the net. Next up, I just want to remind people that rebounds are still effective in NHL 24. In this play, there's a couple turnovers in the neutral zone, but I'm eventually going to get it, and I'm going to notice that the two defensemen are tracking my two attacking forwards. Instead of forcing a pass, I'm going to do a pass off the pads and get a quick rebound. So once again, I offlet it to the winger, and I immediately recognize there's four people around. A pass to Jack Hughes isn't feasible because I'm trying to get it to his forehand, and he could always reach over. If he was a righty, I'd probably make the pass, try and go around and hit Quinn Hughes on the side. But it's just smarter for me to LT, open up my hips, fire it low pad, and have both of my players driving to the net because they are moving forward, and they're going to blow by the defenseman simply because they can skate forward faster than the defenseman can skate backwards. So once again, fire it low, Quinn Hughes is crashing the net. And there you go. It's a quick, simple goal, and it's going to be really hard to defend unless a player is actively searching for it. On this rebound play, I could have sauced it over the Daniel Sedin, but the Sedins are a bit slow, so I thought a pass off the pads was more effective. Now, there's multiple options. Again, I could have tried and gone to Daniel Sedin and then one touched over the Hillary Knight, but for me, it just makes more sense to open up my hips, fire it far side, and again, have Knight get to the crease before the defenseman because unless the defenseman turns around and keeps pace with the winger, the winger is gonna beat the defenseman to the crease every time. So as long as you fire it low, don't spam up on the right stick because you're gonna hit people unless you hold left trigger. Um, let the puck get to you and then shoot the puck. You don't wanna take interference penalties. As long as you can time it right, this is gonna be a way that you score a lot of goals. And you can score rebounds off the cycle too. If you notice that you're near the boards and you're walking down and you realize, oh, there's a guy on the back post but I can't make a pass, fire it far low pad and try and get a rebound. There's no harm in it. If the puck goes the other way, your defensemen are gonna be up there to, to defend the rush. Trust yourself, be confident, try it out a couple times. One of the least utilized skills that I notice people in low division one and below utilizing is the ability to put puck into empty space in order to chase onto it. So on this play, I realize I don't have a play in the slot and I rim it around. I give it to my defenseman and I sauce it into empty space again, which draws out the AI and I almost score a goal. Now, sometimes when you break into the zone, you want to break in with as much speed as possible, but you're not always going to have an option in the slot. I mean, if you look here, it's basically a one on five situation. My forwards aren't going in into the zone and McDavid is too far away for me to make a cross ice pass. I don't want to try and force a saucer pass through five people, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm just going to rim it around the boards because I know McDavid is going to get to that puck faster than this defenseman can turn around and get to it, right? So my idea is I'm going to rim the puck around and chase onto it. McDavid gets to it and all of a sudden his AI is collapsing, but they're not very structured. They're kind of in a, in a line here with two so it's kind of like in a T formation which means I'm gonna have support behind the net again for leech I'm gonna be able to walk out maybe take a far side shot chances are if that happens he's gonna take this guy walk down I'm gonna have the defenseman open so there's a lot of options now I take it I decide I'm gonna walk around I give it to my defenseman and then I'm immediately gonna recognize okay it's probably not smart for me to try and backskate and shoot because there's a wall here and not, I don't have any players below the goal line. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sauce it at the boards. And when you saucer the puck, 
the AI kind of get discombobulated because it's not in the possession of the offensive player. And then from there, I can go into the puck whatever way I want, maybe fake that I'm going to go one way and go the other and try and draw the AI out of position. So I saucer it into open space. He player switches. He's not able to read me, and I get a backhand. Now his goalie pokes it, but once again, it's in empty space. I could have cut to the right and cut inside. I could have cut to the left and cut to the outside. I decided to cut to the outside. He doesn't read it. I get an opportunity. Don't score. But if you keep utilizing empty space and realizing that uh, the puck moves faster than you do, you are going to be in a great position to fool the AI and open up more chances for yourself. Talking about NHL 24 in the cycle, it's a lot different than what it's been in previous years. For example, in previous years, if I wanted a, a cut play in the slot, I could run behind the net and know that if I had the puck right here, my center would be here, I could hit him with a pass, and then as soon as I hit the center with the pass, my winger would cut to the net, I would hit the winger with a pass go as he cuts across the slot and I would shoot it far side. This year, if there's any defenseman in the way of a player, they won't cut as much. They There needs to be empty space in order for the player to cut. So, cycling this year is more of a philosophy than anything. You can be someone who tries to force passes to the middle, catch and shoots and one-timers and whatnot. You can also be someone who works it to the point, gets rebounds and deflections, and works the full pressure system. I'm going to show you some of my cycling plays, and you can see if you can replicate them yourself. So I get a rebound, and I pick up the puck, with Joe Neuendijk. Now, I immediately real recognize my options are Ronick or Foot. Now, I cannot make the pass directly to Foot because of the defenseman, but I can try and walk down, bait this AI into being attached to Ronick because once I walk down, Ronick's gonna go to the boards, which is gonna open up Foot. I cannot pass it to Leach or Crosby because there's too many sticks in the way, and because I'm on overload, I can't guarantee that Crosby's gonna offer me support below the goal line. So these are my two options, unless I wanna hold onto the puck myself. I beat the AI into going to Ronick, and it opens up that lane to Foot. Now, my immediate thought is, who am I gonna pass to next? I gotta think one step ahead. Sidney Crosby is wide open, and I know I can hit him with a pass from foot and get a catch and shoot the other way. But first, I need to make this pass with Joe Neuendijk. Hit, make the pass with foot, my opponent comes chasing after me, and I know that Crosby's going to back up, and I have this free lane to Crosby. Now, a lot of people would try and shoot this short side. I'm going to walk out, let the AI goalie take an extra step to the left, cut across and shoot it the other way. So Adam Foote again makes that pass. His goalie's still stuck in the butterfly, leaves that entire side of the net open. And it's just a nice little catch and shoot. So always think one step ahead, try and draw the AI out of position and you're gonna open up some chance from the slot. Working it up top in order to get to the middle of the ice is very effective, you know, because if you look at it, it's multiple passes. There's a low to high pass, back from a high to low pass to a catch and shoot. You need to confuse the goalie with as many different directions and passes as possible in order to get them out of position and no longer square to the puck. The goalie had a lot of energy still, but because of the plethora of passes and in and, and so many different directions, the goalie still wasn't able to track the puck and it ends up in the back of his net. A major issue people have been complaining about is how do I penetrate the skill zone in NHL 24? They've recently patched a lot of the glitch goals, and it's led to a, a game where people feel like they're, they can rely on their goalies and AI interceptions in order to win games. Now, it is a very defensive game, but with a lot of puck movement and misdirection, you can cause a lot of damage. Now, here I'm cycling on the outside. His defense is in a perfect box plus one, and I decide, well, I need to work it high to low, low to high, and try and pull his AI out of position. I give up the puck and I decide I'm going to make a couple passes with my defenseman. I draw this player out of position, hit a nice pass, toe drag, wrist shot. Now, this play goes really fast and it was faster than I could explain it, but let's walk through it one by one and explain exactly what I'm doing. Now, the goal when shooting the puck is you wanna shoot in the home plate area. The home plate area is the dots up to the top of the circle, across, the dots to the post. I've explained this many times before, but this area is typically where you want to shoot the puck. Now, his offense is in a perfect skill zone. You know, it's a, it's a nice little box here, and one of the players, whether it's a center or whoever this may be, is the one who can kind of chase around. Now, their job should be to stay within the home plate area, or at least between the dots and below the circles. 
I realized that I need to work it high to low and try and draw his defenseman up to the point or try and draw him behind the net. So I already draw one defenseman or one forward up top and now it's now I'm outnumbering. It's five on four, but I don't see an option yet. So I'm going to wait and take my space, make a couple passes and I'm trying to use misdirection in order to confuse the AI into chasing me. His AI already up. There's four people at or near the top of the circle. If I felt more comfortable with the hand in this, I could have forced a pass to Pedersen, but I decided I was gonna wait for a different chance. I make a pass to Gretzky, and I decide I'm gonna walk the line. He's gonna try and catch me because I'm the last man back. If he hits me and I make a mistake, it's a breakaway the other way. I make a quick behind the back pass. He does clip me, but I'm able to walk the line. He sends another player at me, and now it's uh, if I get past him, it's a five on three. I hit Gretzky. He's going to try and chase me because he now knows that I can cut directly to the net. Now, if I cr cut directly to the net, it's going to be a backhand. So he's going to fly over here trying to cut me off. Me knowing this, I'm going to do a nice little change of direction because this lane is wide open, but I don't want to risk it. So I'm going to do the Datsu toe drag, which is going to cut me right into the slot. He's going to miss the toe drag and fly right by me. And there's a shot into the middle. Now, the only reason why this was possible it's because he flung his AI at me because I made so many passes that he was desperate to get the puck. The pressure meter is filling up by the second, so he needs to really get this puck. He sends his defenseman at me, and then I'm able to get into the middle because of his anxiousness. Players are too anxious on defense when they should really be collapsing, and I'm able to take advantage of it with just one quick move and a wrist shot, and that's how you're going to be able to penetrate the skill zone. Next up, I'm going to show a series of clips that are just me backskating and using individual player uh, misdirection in order to open up the goaltender. So on this play, I'm able to backskate. The goalie's still in the butterfly, doesn't track the puck. I'm able to roof it upstairs. On this play, I'm in full pressure. The goalie gets up while at, in the butterfly. And I take advantage of that because he's not able to track it due to the, his lack of energy and the fact that he's changing animations. Doesn't track it. He tries the slide. Doesn't work anyway. So again, no energy. Isn't able to track it. Shoot a glove side. On this clip, I sauce it down with my defenseman. He thinks I'm going to go behind the net. I quickly backskate. I drag it and I shoot it far side. Using misdirection is how you're going to create most of your offense. A lot of players are too intelligent to be caught with basic movements just straight right left. You need to change direction fast. And with this backskating shot, you're not only going to fool a lot of defensemen into blowing right by you, you're also going to fool a lot of goalies into dropping to the butterfly, not tracking the puck, and you're going to pull the puck with you and you're going to shoot it before they can reach out and make the save themselves. This is a very simple tool. You got to make sure you're on your strong side. So if you're on, if you're a righty, you need to do it on the right side of the ice, lefty, left side of the ice, but it's a very effective tool. And it's actually rather simple. A lot of people can do it, go into practice mode and practice it. You might not score it a lot because of the goalie energy and no screens and whatnot, but I promise you it will work in game. Some of you might be saying, hey, Edward, I can't pass at a million miles per hour. I have trouble reading the AI. Well, a quick tip is try DDD one timers. DDD one timers are going to drag the opponent's AI out of position off a rebound, and they're a really good scoring threat, too. On this play, I get the puck with Lemieux, and I immediately send it to Leach for a one timer. Goalie makes the save. I fill up a lot of pressure, and I get another DDD one timer, and it's in the back of the net. Now, again, this is very simple. Once the shot is taken, his AI is going to try and go to the puck. And then once it opens up the lane again, I just take it again. Because the goalies are really bad at tracking side-to-side -side movement. So for me, taking the shot is not just a waste. I mean, it does get the pressure up and you're not going to score it all the time. But it's still a very effective shooting option. Put your cycle shoot for your defenseman on 10. Let the defenseman walk down to the slot. And instead of making a simple pass up to Breeze Ball, maybe walking in and looking for a, a, rich, a seeing eye shot or a deflection, draw that draw that defense to Breeze Ball and look for that cross seam lane for the D to D one timer. In this clip, I'm gonna show you the most simple face off play that you can run. It involves a deflection and it involves people needing to learn that just because the puck is in flight off the faceoff does not mean that you are not controlling your center. On this play, Nico Heischer is going to win the puck back. And immediately, I'm going to manually take Heischer into the slot 
I'm going to shoot the puck with Adam Foote, and I'm going to get a deflection. Now, the issue that people have is that when they win a face-off, oftentimes, they just stand still in the slot waiting for the puck to go back. There's about half a second between the time the face-off's won and the time it gets back to the defenseman. So what you can do is you can manually take Heischer or your center and move him into the slot. Your right winger is going to back up, which is going to take this man out of the equation as he's going to be there. And Heischer's just going to get to the slot unencumbered, and he's going to be able to deflect this puck. Notice how I never just stand still. I manually take my def my center into the slot. I shoot it at his stick, and it's a deflection. Once again, make sure you are moving your center off the draw in order to get this play to work. If you don't, the center's going to stick around the dot, and he's going to get tied up with the other center. So again, take the center manually off the draw. Do not just sit around. Go to the slot and look for this deflection play. It's very simple. But it works at about 50% clip for me. You're going to score a lot of goals doing this. The last point I want to make about offense is this. In NHL 24, you can try anything you want and you can find a way to score. Offense this year is not as cookie cutter as it has been in previous years. If you feel like you can chain a deke into a shot, take it. If there's an open shot in the slot, don't feel obligated to shoot either blocker side or glove side. Take the shot wherever you feel comfortable. Recognize the goalie tendencies. In this play, for example, I do a Datsuk toe drag in the slot. In previous years, I wouldn't have taken the shot because it wasn't considered a meta shot. If you remember the NHL 23 meta, it was force a cross crease pass or walk across the, the slot and fire it far side. In this year, there are no goals that really go in 100% of the time, but there's a bunch of goals that go in 30 to 40% of the time. If you notice the goalie is not tracking the puck left to right, shoot the puck to the open space. It can be a wrist shot from the slot. It can be a wrist shot coming out from behind the net, you know, glove side, blocker side, it doesn't matter. The thing that matters the most is that you're recognizing how the goalie is animating, track the goalie, and then fire to the open side. A lot of shots are going to go in regardless of what cycling you do. So try new things. When you're up in a game, try something new. For example, on this play, I decide to cycle it down low, and I'm eventually going to hit a goal line one-timer. see a drop pass, I circle back, and I just wire a goal line one-timer. But again, if you look at this play, I do a nice saucer pass, I try and do a draw pass between my defender's legs just so I can go for a backhand. I'm trying a lot of things because the the main thing on offense is tracking how the goalie is animating. I tried this one timer because I saw it in a sixes game once. I saw Eclipse win a 6v6 tournament with this goal line one timer. I decide to try it and it goes in the net because the goalie can't track it. That's not going to go in all the time. But if you see an open shot, take it. Do not be afraid to be unorthodox. Try new things. Try to be different. Because if you're different, it's going to be harder for the defenders to defend properly. The more you add to your tool book, the more you add to your plays, the more you add to any aspect of this game, it's going to be harder for players to defend. So try something new. And there you have it. Plays, maneuvers, and philosophies that I have when playing offense. In NHL 24. I hope these plays enable you to score and recognize that not every offensive play style is the same and for you to try something new because you never know when you're going to find the next great goal that's going to turn you from a, a casual novice player into one of the top players in the world. Again, I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I'd like to direct you to my other socials like my TikTok where I upload videos semi-occasionally and my Twitch where I'm streaming five days a week rivals and hut champs i'm going for 100 no in champs this year this weekend in hut champs season five so i hope you'll be there from wednesday on to sunday once again thank you for watching this video and i hope you guys have a fantastic day and score a bunch of goals